we face what I have called a long ascent for the global economy, a climb that will be difficult, uneven, uncertain, and prone to setbacks. But it is a climb up, and we will have a chance to address some persistent problems, low productivity, slow growth, high inequalities, a looming climate crisis. We can do better than build back the pre-pandemic world. We can build forward to a world that is more resilient, sustainable, and inclusive. We must seize this new Bretton Woods moment. How? I see three imperatives. First, the right economic policies. Strong medium-term frameworks for monetary, fiscal, and financial policies, as well as reforms to boost trade, competitiveness, and productivity can help create confidence for policy action now while building much-needed resilience for the future. That includes keeping a careful watch on risks presented by elevated debt. The fund is providing debt relief to its poorest members, and with the World Bank, we support extension by the G20 of the Debt Service Suspension Initiative. Beyond this, where debt is unsustainable, it should be restructured without delay. We should move towards greater debt transparency and enhanced creditor coordination. And policies must be for people. My second imperative. To reap the full benefits of sound economic policy, we must invest more in people. That means protecting the vulnerable. It also means boosting human and physical capital to underpin growth and resilience. Just as the pandemic has shown that we can no longer ignore health precautions, we can no longer afford to ignore climate change, my third imperative. We focus on climate change because it is macrocritical, posing profound threats to growth and prosperity. It is also people critical and planet critical. At the Fund, we are working tirelessly to support a durable recovery and a resilient future as countries adapt to structural transformations brought on by climate change, by digital acceleration, and the rise of the knowledge economy. Since the pandemic began, we have committed over $100 billion, and we still have substantial resources from our $1 trillion in lending capacity. We will continue to pay special attention to the urgent needs of emerging market and low-income countries, especially small and fragile states, helping them to pay doctors and nurses and protect the most vulnerable people and parts of their economy. The best memorial we can build to those who have lost their lives in this crisis is, in the words of Keynes, that bigger thing building a more sustainable and equitable world. Our founders did it. It is now our turn. This is our moment.